danger. I have no particular style, but I always tell the same story, a story about anguish, permanent fear, how to survive on this earth. The same question comes up time after time. Has the little man any chance of surviving? So far, I can't say with any certainty whether the answer is yes or no. Look at this little village on the Adriatic, where the killers who come up out of the sea look so horribly familiar. Doesn't it remind you of certain recent events? But here in Zagreb, they want to believe in peace, and they're sure their next cartoon film festival will be a great success. It's not easy in just 13 minutes to tell you everything about the Zagreb school. And now, a third item. Now, I'd like to talk to you about magic. Cartoon films are full of magic, for instance. Take these two. How do they move, eh? Come, they can move. Who makes them move, eh? Well, I, the great Hugh Lloyd, am in the process of performing a magic trick which will transport you into the past, the distant past, when cartoon animators rarely were magicians. Here we are in the United States in 1914. The Americans are fascinated by a fabulous spectacle. A lady dinosaur appears before their astonished eyes with her creator, Winsor McKay. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Gertie. Winsor McKay has just introduced Gertie, a young lady dinosaur, light of step, head held high, a sassy chassis, and with an appetite and a heart. Say hello to everyone, Gertie. Very good. Lift your right leg, Gertie. Now the left one. Gertie, forget the sea serpent. Don't cry, you big softy. Here, have a sweetie. There we are. Come on now, lift your left leg, will you? There's a good girl. Are you still hungry? She's still hungry. This is a creature that can eat as much as ten times its own weight every day. What are you looking at, Gertie? Oh, it's Jumbo. Jumbo is an adult male mammoth, the hairy variety. Gertie, leave Jumbo alone. Oh, you naughty girl. <laughs> Right. Many members of the audience and theatre managers, where McKay showed his films on his tour around the United States, refused to believe they were watching cartoons. They thought it was an illusion using springs or something. enough to drink. Pick me up and take me home. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Of course, in 1914, cartoon films were still in their infancy. Walt Disney was only 13, and Mortimer the Mouse, who eventually became Mickey Mouse, won't be on the scene for a while yet. But let's go back again to those early times. Winsor McKay was already famous for his strip cartoons in the Sunday papers, and for other cartoon films he'd made previously. This disquieting mixture of fantasy and realism we find in Gertie will be a common thread throughout his work. In 1905, McKay created a character on the Sunday Herald newspaper who has remained one of the great figures of cartoon history, Little Nemo. Nemo was the little boy who every Sunday woke up in the last frame from his strip cartoon dreams, only to dream again without fail the following Sunday.
Little Nemo and his dreamtime friends Flip, Inky, Professor Pill and the Princess were the characters of Windsor McKay's first cartoon film in 1911. It was an ambitious project and his collaborators took some convincing at first. Naturally, paper and ink were needed. Lots of paper and ink. <laughs> All the characters and the scenery had to be carefully reproduced on each individual sheet of paper. I'll tell you why in a minute. But for the moment, just take a look at this. In those days, as you've seen, each picture was drawn directly onto a sheet of paper. Now, me, I'm drawn on one side of a celluloid strip. And coloured in on the other. So, there you are. It was also in 1905 that Windsor McKay launched his other famous strip cartoon in the Evening Telegram about the nightmares of cheese eaters. What gave them bad dreams was, of course, the cheese fondue they were all too fond of. <laughs> oh, I feel awful. What did no they put in that cheese? cheese? for me, I tell you, oh dear. I can't sleep. Poor oh, guys, yeah, yeah. they really have a tough time. After all that cheese for supper, the poor creatures fall asleep and have terrible nightmares. And they can only escape when they wake up. We interviewed some of them and boy, what a state they were in. Oh, Beryl, I never felt so awful. Mom, Dad, I'm so ill. What's the matter with you at this time of night? Oh, oh, oh. What the devil's happening here? Uh -huh. Oh, it must be the cheese. Oh. It's the cheese's fault. I'll never touch this stuff again in my life. Oh, God, oh, oh what a great Oh, God. for cheese fondue. First of all, you take a gas mug, uh, then some butter, some beer, a pinch of salt and pepper, <laughs> uh, then you add some cheese, stir it all up together, pour it into a slice of toast. And uh, what do you have? Nightmares, that's what. Well, what do you expect? Windsor McKay made a number of great cartoon films using characters from three of his strip cartoons. For example, Bugs Vaudeville in 1917, in which a man who's obviously been at the cheese fondue dreams about a circus where all the performers are insects, would you believe?
2012, Winsor McKay made yet another film based on his inexhaustible cheese strip, also featuring an insect. It was called How a Mosquito Operates, and it could be said to be the first horror film with a monster insect in it. But it made one of the most amusing cartoon horror films ever made. See for yourselves. Ooh. In a third film entitled The Flying House, we share the nightmare of a woman who does a moonlight flick with her husband because they're behind with a rent. And where do they fly to? Why, the moon, of course. Teachers and students are asked to pay particular attention to the rotation of the Earth and the Moon. Their orbit is based on accurate astronomic calculations. In the background, you can even see the constellation of Orion. Prepare for landing! of the Lusitania, Windsor McKay took his inspiration for the first time from current events and invented a disaster movie. When Gertie came to the American screens, the United States hadn't yet joined the war and didn't for another year. In fact, until Friday the 7th of May 1915, when an English transatlantic liner, the Lusitania, was sunk by a German U-boat with great loss of American lives. The barbaric act deeply shocked Windsor McKay. The nightmare of reality was far greater than anything he had portrayed, even in his darkest films. Although he used the new celluloid process for the first time, it took him three years to complete the 25,000 drawings for this film. And that's how, at the beginning of this century, cartoon films and strip cartoons were conjured up by the same magician. Let's stay in the States and meet another magician of animation, this time a very modern one. Here's a magician from Portland on the west coast of the United States.